Hello and welcome to our second culinary experience here in Lima, Peru. Today we are very excited because we are going to the sixth best restaurant in the entire world. It is created by world-renowned chef Virgilio Martinez, and he was actually featured in this Netflix show called Chef's Table in season three, episode six. Definitely check it out because basically what the show does is it breaks down Virgilio's life story and it also shows the incredible research that the restaurant is doing on plant species in Peru. And overall, it just really explains his approach to cooking, which is definitely unique compared to other world-renowned chefs. Unfortunately, we did not get a reservation at Central because it is booked like months in advance. And so we hopped on their wait list. And unfortunately, I just got an email saying that we did not get a spot on their wait list either but we are in luck. So Virgilio's wife, Pia Leon, who's actually the best female chef in the entire world in 2021, opened her own restaurant called Koye in the same complex. Koye has a very similar flair to Central and it has Pia Leon's dishes and recipes. Hopefully we can get a spot at Koye. It might also be booked up. Last resort, there is a bar in that same complex called Mayo. And basically they do serve some dishes that come from Virgilio and his team. Either way, today we are going to try super, super hard to get some food under the name of Virgilio Martinez or Pia Leon. So in case you guys did not recognize, I am wearing my finest outfit for the occasion because obviously we are going to a fine dining restaurant. So this is the best that I've got. Claire is down here digging. Stressfully digging for something. I think my classiest thing will actually be these pair of pants that I bought in 2013 when I was a sophomore in high school. And that is very sad, but it will have to do. They honestly kind of look like pajama pants too. This is my best outfit, guys. So the little restaurant complex opens at 12.30 and we're going to get there before the doors even open. So I really hope we can get a seat. Gracias. Really? A central? <laughs> yes, we have oh. a table available for today. <gasps> oh my gosh, no way, yes! Really? Yes, we'll take it! <laughs> yes! <laughs> oh my goodness! <laughs> yeah, wow. that's crazy. I just got a, a cancellation actually. So, oh, yes. wonderful! So there was a cancellation at Central, and of course, since we're the first people here, we actually got this spot, and I can't believe it. This is like a huge dream come true. I'm like fangirling right now. I can't believe we got a spot. <laughs> So we just got our menus and it basically breaks down Peru by altitude. So we just got our very first little cocktail and we did get the drink pairing to go with the entire set menu. And basically there's this ice cube that has some seaweed inside of it. And then he mixed a cactus juice with a liqueur and it made this beautiful green drink. So we have just been pouring some water and they actually make their own water here and they collect it all the way from the Andes and then they've made it nice and sparkling and it tastes really good. <laughs> oh, they're so warm. Oh, they smell so good. <laughs> so the first experience just came out and it was squid, clams, and seaweed. And there was definitely a green theme going on, but it tasted incredible. And I'm just so excited to be here. It's amazing. <laughs> So it came with these little green balls that were served warm and then you had these crispy crackers made out of seaweed and you would put this little paste that had clams and squid on it and then you'd eat it all together. And just all the flavors that were going on there, I just couldn't even believe it. So next up we have Dry Valley, it's the second experience and it comes with some shrimp, some squash and then also some avocado and it's served beautifully surrounded by all sorts of herbs and plants and it's like a little St. Patrick's Day celebration right here. <laughs> it's like cream coming out. It's kind of like creamy pumpkin a puree with a little touch of seafood just at the bottom. So we've now made it on to Experience 3, which is the upper jungle, and we are at 1,350 meters. 
And what we have here are two little creations made from, I think it's called the flying potato, but it might also be called the hanging potato, which is a fruit that hangs from a tree and it looks kind of like a potato. <laughs> and so here we have one that kind of mimics the sponge. And then here we have one that mimics the potato itself. And we are going to dip this one in this yellow sauce. We're gonna dip this one in this yogurt with syrup. Feels very much like a sponge. It's like a very chewy sourdough bread. And this sauce is a little bit sour. The bread is so chewy. I'm a big fan of chewy bread. Now on to this one. Almost like a really good dessert. Kind of like a bread as well, but on the inside, it's like a very moist cake. And then on the outside, you've got this really nice crunchy texture. And then this sauce is a nice little hint of sweetness. So you've got the yogurt and the syrup, and it mixes really well together. Almost like a very light cake. I really like this one. <laughs> wow. Yeah, it's like a really delicious biscuit. I want to add that we've been here for about 20 minutes and Claire and I have not stopped smiling and grinning because we just feel so lucky to be here. So our next drink pairing has arrived and it is a pineapple drink that has been fermented for 15 days and it is sweetened with sugar cane. So I'm gonna give it a try. Yeah, it's really nice. It's like a pineapple kombucha. Our fourth experience has arrived and it is called Extreme Altitude and we are currently at 4200 meters and this entire dish is basically made out of corn. You've got a corn puree at the bottom and then you've got some chips that are made out of red corn and purple corn and then on the inside you've got some quinoa sprinkled around in there. what it tastes like. It tastes very similar to cream of corn. <laughs> a lot of southern food. Like a really good cream of corn though. Interesting. This does not remind me of the corn that we've had in Peru. And most of the corn that you have is very starchy. So it's pretty nice, yeah. Cream of corn. Cream of corn. <laughs> We're like lower middle class Americans. We're like cream of corn. Cream of corn right here. <laughs> so for our next drink pairing, we have this beautiful orange wine that is made out of the same grapes that they use to make Pisco, and this does come from the city of Pisco as well. <laughs> so for our fifth experience, we are doing the Amazon Connection, and we are currently at 148 meters. So this here used to be a very, very large fish, 12 feet long to be exact, actually. And this fish was used to make the dish that we are about to eat. And as you can see, it's very colorful and it is topped off with some Amazonian salt. So the top looks very bubbly and it appears a little bit foamy as well. Oh, there's something inside. So if I had to guess, it would probably be the fish that I just dug up. The fish is a little bit tough and then this foam is so interesting because you're basically just eating some bubbles with your tough fish. I don't know, maybe Chad can describe it better. <laughs> it does not taste like fish whatsoever to me. It actually tastes more like chicken or a pork. And it has a just a very fiery taste. Man, I really enjoy this though. So I know our descriptions are a little bit weird, but it doesn't taste bad. Like it's really delicious. It's just a fish that I've never had before and I just don't know what this texture is. <laughs> so our sixth experience, we are now at sea ground, which is zero meters. And here we have a scallop cooked in three different ways and that is underneath all the crispiness that you see on top and the crisps are actually made out of a seaweed and then on the top you've got this stringy thinly sliced cucumber that has been soaked in beet juice which gives it this very vibrant magenta color super super fresh and I can feel it because when I bite into it just tears apart super easily wow it might be one of my favorites so far so with our next dish is new wine, which is from Argentina, and I'm gonna give it a taste. We are now at our seventh experience, and we are at Mil Centro, which is at 3,750 meters. Are we at our seventh? Yeah. I thought we were at our sixth. No. <laughs> We've eaten a lot. <laughs> oh, wow. And so basically what we have here is they have this tiny little oven that they created 
that house these two potatoes and it's made out of the clay from the mountains. And we are going to take this potato and dip it in this special little sauce that has some herbs in it. And on the very top, there's this ash from the herbs and we're gonna mix it all together. And then there's another potato here that we're also gonna dip in the sauce. And to pair with this meal, we have an Andean APA. And apparently to make this, they use some water from some legumes in the area. <laughs> I'm going to begin with the potato here. Wow, that's a hot potato. The Andean herb sauce, Chad. So this really brings me back to Cusco when we were in the Andes and eating a lot of these herbs in a lot of the restaurants there. And it's a great potato too. <laughs> So as you can see, it's hollow on the inside. So it's kind of just like a potato chip with the Andean herbs. So we are now at our eighth experience of the day and it is called Amazonian water. And we are currently at 190 meters. Underneath all of this beautiful color is a fish called Paku. And this is a fish that you find in the Amazonian rivers and it is in the same family as the piranha. This fish actually eats a lot of fruits. When the fruits fall from the jungle trees, it lands in the water and they're eating like mangoes and watermelon. And so the chef has prepared the fish with these fruits that it eats and it is topped off with some coconut milk. And then also to pair with this meal, we have an Amazonian drink made out of Amazonian fruit and also liqueur. I have fish and watermelon on it. That's really nice. <laughs> the sweetness of the melon with that tartness of the fish and maybe the sauce that it's in. It's a really great tropical combination and I'm a big fan. This one might be one of my, my top choices once again. The little crumbs that were at the top of the dish are actually the skin of the fish. But wow, the flavor is incredible in this one. We are currently on our ninth experience and we are currently in the forest, in parentheses, Loma, and we are at 810 meters. And what we have here is a goat's neck underneath a ton of tubers, which are roots that you kind of find here in Peru. Here we have an Uruguay wine to pair with this dish. And wow, I can't wait to try goat's neck. I've never tried it before. <laughs> Whoa, it peeled apart super easily. I pulled it with more force than needed. <laughs> So you've got a nice crunchy tuber and then like this goat's neck that peels apart, super, super tender. And the sauce kind of tastes like a gamey beef stew. It's a little bit sweet, but overall very savory. Now we are entering into the dessert territory. So they have poured us a Peruvian apple cider drink to pair with our dessert. We are at the Sacred Valley at 2,700 meters. So here we have a dessert made out of chirimoya as well as muña, which is a mint. And we're supposed to mix this with this little dish over here. I'm not really sure what this is, but I think it will taste very good. It's very cold, it's very refreshing, has hints of apple, and a little bit of like a honey syrup kind of taste. We are at our very last experience, and it is called cacao chuncho and we are at 1800 meters. So what we have here are different parts of the cacao and they've selected different parts to make different little dishes. So what we're supposed to do is we taste this, we drink, taste, drink, and then when we're done tasting everything, we add all of the leftovers to this little cake thing that they have here. It's like a really, really rich chocolate ice cream. I'm going to drink the cacao water. Ooh, it tastes like a very watered down hot chocolate, but very rich in the cacao flavor. Second up here. It tastes like a very rich, dark chocolate paste. We have this gelatin. It tastes like a lemon jello without any sugar. Interesting, that one reminds me somewhat of a watered down Gatorade <laughs> that has been turned into a jello. I really do like it though. Lastly, it tastes like a very delicate chocolate wafer. So now as a final hurrah, we're going to add 
all four of these little ingredients to our chocolate cake what it looks like. The only way that I can describe what I just experienced is literally a symphony of flavor. Every single thing had its own like solo going on in my taste buds and I just feel extremely grateful for this entire experience. Yeah, thank you guys so much. We'll remember this forever. All right, time to go pay. Yes, time to go pay the big hefty bill. <laughs> Boss woman is Oops. paying the bill. I need to calculate their tip. <laughs> Thank you so much. Thank you so much. <laughs> so something else I want to add is that we arrived at 12.30 p.m. and it's already 4 p.m. So our day has flown by. The experience took a lot of time, but it did not feel like it. I honestly feel like we were only there for like 30 minutes. So in case you missed all that just happened, we basically walked into Central thinking that we didn't have a reservation. We might get a spot at Koye, which is his wife's restaurant. And we were probably going to be ending up at the bar. <laughs> and we were pleasantly surprised that someone canceled their reservation today at Central. And because we were the first ones there, we got their reservation. And I just like, honestly, I couldn't even believe it when she told us mm -hmm. because so many people wait months and months to come to eat at Central, and we just walked in and out of pure luck and being there at the right time we got a table at the sixth best restaurant in the entire world yeah i just want to say i am so grateful that we got to do this experience and it was way beyond even my highest expectations yeah if you couldn't tell we never ever dine at fine dining restaurants because it's obviously way out of our budget. And when we went in there, like just looking around, we had honestly the biggest smiles on our face compared to a lot of the other diners mm -hmm. just because we weren't used to something like this. Yeah. And it was such an exciting experience for us to take on. The best thing was that the experience just kept going because mm -hmm. there are 11 dishes. They bring out the first one, you have an amazing time with it and then they bring out the next one and it's a completely different taste mm -hmm. and experience overall. And it just keeps going and going and you just travel around the land of Peru based off of whatever they serve you on their plate. And we really did feel like we ate the land, the seafood dishes, it really felt like you're eating the sea. And then if you're eating um, something that came from the Andes or from the Amazon, it felt like you're eating the jungle or if you're eating the mountains. And I think that was just a very life-changing experience mm -hmm. for us to have because, you know, I don't know where else you would go to have something like this. Yeah, the whole experience honestly felt like we just finished a very, very, very good book. Like, I felt so grateful for this book and the experience. You kind of wish that it wasn't over, but it still like has changed your life in this mm -hmm. whole new perspective. So now it really comes down to saying like, was it worth it? Because mm -hmm. you do get a very hefty and expensive bill at the end of it. Yeah. But honestly, if we were comparing it to an American restaurant that was similar to this yeah. in its rating, um, it would have been at least like 700 US dollars. Yeah, if not a thousand. Yeah, we ended up paying 315 US dollars for mm -hmm. not only an 11 course meal for two people, but also for drink pairings for every single meal that came onto the table. Yeah. And so all of that, $315 for two people, not too bad in my opinion. So I would definitely say that if you're gonna go to Central, it is not for the person that's looking for a hearty plate of food to fill them up. Mm -hmm. It's definitely more for a person that's looking for an experience, they're looking to understand the Peruvian cuisine in a whole new way. Yeah. So with all of that, we are going to leave it here and we will see you guys next time in the Amazon rainforest. <gasps> Bye!